and welcome to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to be reviewing the Rockville Amplified Speaker System. I'll be showing you some of the key features of the PA speakers as well as the subwoofer. So we'll get on to that. So here's an up-close look at the RPG-15 speaker. Now this is an internally amplified speaker with an RMS power of 250 watts and a peak power of 1000 watts. So this is a real beast. Now you might think that a speaker this size for, uh, from a premium brand would come in at like maybe three or four hundred dollars a piece. Well this one can be acquired for 174 bucks. Now that is a really good deal for a speaker of this power output. But the interesting thing is you might think it sounds really bad because it's so cheap, right? Well in reality they sound very, very excellent. They're maybe slightly lacking in the mid-range compared to a very high-end speaker, but really, uh, for DJ and PA use, you can't beat this. It's an amazing speaker, it works super well, and it truly is a piece of professional gear at a consumer's price. Now I've done many DJ gigs with these speakers, and I've owned these for about three years, and I've never had any problems with them uh, breaking down or having other issues uh, at all. So really, uh, this is a phenomenal system. The Rockville system is probably, a, it's both economy and performance for your DJ operation or PA operation. And uh, if you're thinking of getting a speaker system, these things rock, as the name implies. So we'll have a quick look at the back side of the RPG-15. As you can see, this speaker has a, a microphone preamplifier with its own volume control, a line in with RCA and XLR with its own gain control, and a master volume control. Now it also has a pass-through line out that allows you to directly connect the output of the speaker to a daisy chain connection with other audio gear, and it has level controls for treble and bass. I like to bump the treble up just slightly on these speakers because uh, they are it makes the clarity a little bit better on the high end, but other than that, usually I like to keep these around unity, right around 12 o'clock. Power input is fused so it won't take out the rest of your network if there's a short circuit inside for any reason and it can operate on both 115 or 230 volts without an external transformer. Now we'll get on to show you the, uh, the base, or the RBG-15 subwoofer. So here you see the front of the RBG-15S subwoofer. This is a 1600 watt peak, 400 watt RMS subwoofer, so it's very, very powerful. And it has some interesting internal features with its internal amplification, including digital signal processing. I'll show you that in a minute. So here's a look at the back of the RBG-15S subwoofer. You can see that uh, in addition to the line inputs, it actually has a direct pass-through line output. So you can take your inputs from the mixing board, pass it through, and send the outputs right off to the speakers. Now this does have digital signal processing in it. It has effectively a bass boost as well as an extended low frequency setting, or you can operate it just as a regular uh, unmodified un uh, subwoofer. Now you can set your low pass filter to either 80 hertz, 100 hertz, or 120 hertz. That just tells the subwoofer what range of frequencies to let through. I find that uh, for outdoor venues, the richest sound comes through at the highest setting, 120 hertz. But if you want to be able to produce that really strong bumping bass without a lot of vibration, you may want to bump it down to 100 or 80. Now uh, you also have the option to reverse the polarity. So, if you were operating this subwoofer at the back of the uh, venue with the speakers in the front, you might want to reverse it so that you don't have uh, destructive interference between the speaker uh, audio and the subwoofer audio. Now this thing is ridiculously powerful. I, find, I hardly ever find myself having to turn the gain up above the zero point. Usually for outdoor venues I'm around minus 3 dB or somewhere around there. And uh, as with the other system, it is multi-voltage input and has the fused line input. So next I will actually show you the entire system as it would be while I'm DJing, and uh, I'll show you how that works. Before I start the demonstration, I thought I'd tell you what this is. This is a device I built as an audiovisual prop for my DJ gigs, and uh, it's called a photophonometer. It's effectively an incandescent bulb driver that takes uh, low frequencies and high frequencies, and respectively lights the rear bulbs and uh, front bulb when it detects those frequencies present. So this is a fully custom device that I built that I may cover in a future video, but uh, I just thought I'd introduce what that is so that when it starts uh, doing its thing during the music, you'll be able to uh, have some context for that. In case you were wondering, all of this equipment will run perfectly well on modified sine wave, so I'm going to be using my energized toolbox to demonstrate this to power the system. Alright, let's have a go at this. 
Now keep in mind that the audio that you hear from your sound system and from the microphone on this uh, camera is actually not going to be entirely representative of what comes out of the speakers. You would have to be here in person to really get the proper uh, sound out of it, but hopefully this will give a relatively accurate rendition of the output. So I'm going to switch the power on now. Power is on. And now, I'm going to be playing Energy by Electronomia. shameless advertising now. If you're interested in any DJ or PA services, feel free to shoot me an email on my Dielectric Videos email, which is listed in my About page, and I'll be sure to get in touch about that. Anyone in the Tempe or Phoenix area who's interested in DJing, I'm always glad to do events. It's lots of fun and I get to play with my equipment. So thank you for watching Dielectric Videos. I will see you next time.